Hey everyone, it's Jennifer here from A Country Life and today I'm going to do a great book, a great big cooking. It is 4.15, I'm getting a little bit later start than I wanted but we just kind of got a bunch of stuff cleaned up in the house and everything first and uh, I had some teens home and so they were able to do a couple uh, jobs to like clean out the microwave, clean the top of the fridge, do some dishes, things like that while I was running around doing laundry and stuff. Anyways, I have settled in now and I'm going to get going on uh, great big cooking. I don't really do once a month cooking. I just kind of make a list of a bunch of things I want to make. I make those over the course of a couple days. Uh, sometimes the stuff just gets left in the refrigerator if I know I'm going to be using it within the next few days and or sometimes I put stuff in the freezer uh, to use like the next week or something. So um, I'm just going to get started here by showing you what is on my list. So I'm going to start by making a pancake mix. I'm going to make that times five. That's just the dry ingredients. Uh, I'm going to make 24 hamburgers, twice baked potato, and that is actually thanks to Jay Morrell. If, if you watch large family vlogs, you probably have watched Jay Morrell a time or two. And the last time she made twice baked potatoes, and they look so incredibly good. And it's been a long time, I think probably since last cranberry harvest, since I made twice baked potatoes. So it's time to do that. I'm going to make 10 pounds of potatoes into that. Um, I'm going to get, I think it's about three pounds of venison steak marinating. I'm going to do four pounds of a mixture of beef and venison burger into barbecue and then I'm going to make four pounds of venison burger into taco meat and I'm trying something new typically with pepper steak I start with venison steak then I slice it real thin the dishwasher is kicking in here if you can hear that <laughs> um, so I slice that real thin and then the recipe uses the crock pot but this time I'm actually going to start with a three and a half pound roast and then I'm just going to shred that with all of the um, other ingredients all like the juicy stuff and um, kind of the gravy that goes with pepper steak so I'm going to try that this time and then I have two soup recipes I know it's June and I know that we are uh, we're getting 80s it's 80 degrees right now and the rest of the week supposed to be pretty hot but I have um, a lot of beef short ribs and I don't really know what to do with them and I just found a recipe and then I also have some ham hocks left that I think I probably mentioned to you a while back that I was going to use. I still haven't used those and I have a little bit of extra diced ham in the refrigerator so I'm going to use that too and make uh, times two of ham and bean soup. So even though it's hot I enjoy soup, Warren enjoys soup so I'm making soup. Let's just get on with this I took out a whole bunch of my meat yesterday and got that all thawing. I do realize I still need to take out another four pounds um, of burger. So I'm going to get that going and then we'll get going with the cooking. That's okay. Welsh, can you lock up Esca though? to put this great big pile of potatoes in at 350 degrees. I'm going to bake them for at least an hour since I'm baking them pretty close together. Just hold on a second. Since I'm baking them pretty close together on a tray, it's probably going to take longer than an hour, but I do have a lot of little potatoes. So, um, you know, they're not all evenly sized, so I'm, I'll just have to check them in an hour. The twice baked potatoes that I make are pretty rich. Right here, this is like a pound and a half. Uh, I'm not going to, I am going to fry all of it, but I don't think I'll use all of it for the twice baked potatoes. Since the potatoes have to bake for such a long time, I got those into the oven real quick here uh, first. And then I've got the bacon uh, frying on a real low temperature because that's also going to take quite a while because uh, it is quite a, quite a pan full. And, oh, pretty butterfly outside. Since we are going to grill these hamburgers for supper here, I'm going to start uh, making up the hamburger patties. Using a hamburger press is, um, you know, it's one more expense of an item to have in the kitchen and it is one more thing to wash other than just your hands. Um, but I do find that I really like using the hamburger press because I get a nice even patty and then they cook evenly so that they all get done on the grill at the same time. So I picked this up from Cabela's, um, I would say probably at least 10 years ago. And then also these Lem freezer sheets that's what I use to press them on. So 
anyways, it is a little bit of an added expense, but I think it just works really, really well. The bacon is all finished up here and I'm just letting that cool for a little while before I break it up and and then next up I'm going to work on putting together all of the pancake mix and I think I can do it so I'm popping back in the time is 10 after 7 right now like I told you earlier when I started it was four o'clock um, life just kind of has a way of being life and we had to stop uh, Warren grilled all the um, burgers and then I was getting some other things ready for supper and things like that washing up grapes and all that kind of thing so we had to take quite a break for supper and we all like to visit around the table usually so that took a little bit just a minute here Maria Maria just try to whisper right now okay okay they're playing a game and trying to decide who's going to be what color all right so anyways here's where I'm at I have the barbecue is going here I had to use orange pepper because I was out of green pepper I thought I had a bunch of green pepper in the freezer, but I just could not seem to locate it. So the recipe that I'm using is uh, for Sloppy Joe's, and that is out of the Pioneer Woman Cooks Food from My Frontier cookbook. My family really, really likes this. I really like um, the recipe that my mom and grandma always made, but my family seems to like this one. It's a little bit sweeter and doesn't have the celery in it, which I think is what... They like better and this is half ground venison and half ground beef in this pot right here which I've got some heavy lids on top of it right now I have the taco meat and I also put a giant onion in there because that just helps the meat to go a little bit further and I have to get the pepper steak into a crock pot and then both of these things go in crock pots too so the three things the pepper steak the beef short rib soup and the ham and bean soup those three have to go in crock pots so what i'm going to do is get them into the crock pots today but i don't think i'm going to cook them overnight so i think i only have about a half an hour of work time left here tonight um, because i see warren's got the log strapped down he's got a great big project going um, him and the kids are super super pumped he uh, sawed a whole bunch of logs and now they're going to have it sawn into lumber tomorrow and that is going to be for they're planning on building kind of like a shack or a shed or something like that that's going to it's be a it's a sleeping cabin that you can ice fish okay marie is going to tell us about it what's dad making so he's making a, a sleep uh like a like like what we did like where we went when when we went up north it's like a it's it's this big cabin, mm -hmm. and so we're gonna. So he's hoping to put beds in it, so you can like sleep overnight. So in the morning you're you're still in the cabin. Okay, for ice fishing. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully we can share more about that as it goes. It's been a lot of years that they've been talking about this and then now the logs have um, gotten cut and now tomorrow that's going to be sawn into lumber and then it has to dry for a certain amount of time. I don't even know how long. But anyways, that's some big plans that we have going. And I have to follow Warren in because we just have some vehicle things going on right now. And so... He, he's, his marsh truck is um, out of commission right now, and so we're using our big van to haul uh, logs in and a dump truck. And so 
we're going to just work on all that tonight okay that's just a lot of details here but anyways that's what's going on so i only have a half an hour here one of the things that i like to do uh, to save money on groceries is to make my own seasonings if i can um, and really you just kind of the best thing i found is to just go to pinterest and start finding the different types of seasonings that you like and try to find a knockoff version of it or whatnot. Well, anyways, this taco seasoning recipe um, is one that uh, I've just kind of adapted. Don't do that, sweetie. Um, I've adapted from one of my sister-in-law's recipes. This is not going to be enough for my four pounds of meat over here, so I'm going to have to make some more. This recipe, I actually just remembered that I keep it posted inside my cabinet door here. So um, here it is. It's one and a half cups chili powder, one fourth cup kosher salt, two tablespoons garlic powder, two tablespoons onion powder, and one tablespoon cumin. I keep it posted there just because I, I do make the seasoning quite a bit. We make a lot of tacos, nachos, taco soup, um, fajitas a lot of times I'll just use this for fajita mix and like chicken tacos things like that so I just keep it posted right here another thing that you can do to make your um, like taco meat go further is to use a can of refried beans I'm just gonna put that into my if I can get this out one-handed come on loosen up a can of refried beans this kind of makes the meat a little bit creamier. Can you guys, am I getting that? Am I filming that right? It makes the meat a little creamier, and again, it just kind of makes it go a little bit further, makes it a little bit more filling, and plans have again changed. It's eight o'clock now. Um, Warren just came in saying that it's finally calming down, and so we, I'll backtrack. It's been super windy here for probably the past four or five days and so he's been irrigating for moisture uh, irrigating the cranberry vines for moisture the wind we've been been getting such strong east winds that one side of the cranberry bed is like always staying just a little bit dry because the wind is blowing the irrigation water um the other direction right and so there's like this little strip along the one edge oh joe's trying to get in the camera here there he is all bathed up and clean do you smell good yeah Mmm, you smell like baby powder. So that one side has just ticket. been... Oh, you got a ticket? Yeah. So the one side's been dry. What's happened now is that it is finally calming down after all these days of just just wind, 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 wind. And so instead of driving those logs in to the, um, into the, I don't even know, the log, what is it called? The lumber? The lumber sawyer or something i don't know what they're called he just came in quick and said hey if you don't mind can we take the logs in later because i want to get some irrigation going and so he is um, gonna do some irrigating and it takes just to get everything up and going everything it's going to take at least an hour it looks like it's going to be kind of a late night for us but that's okay for me because that means that i can keep on cooking getting this done and in, in between i'm also giving the three kids baths because i've been doing a bath night lately where each kid has a night and we just kind of keep rotating one bath a night but we've had a couple busy nights and some kids that have fallen asleep at weird times and things so that didn't happen so anyways tonight all three of them need baths so i'm cycling them through the shower and trying to cook and waiting for for Warren to come in so I better stop talking and I need to get back into uh, getting this food prepped so that we can keep this night rolling so twice baked potatoes really aren't something that you have to shy away from they they are sort of putsy I guess but the I think the end product it just is just so so good and everybody likes twice baked potatoes it is a nice thing to make kind of a lot at one time since it is kind of putsy it's nice to make one big batch and then you can have them like maybe two or three or even four times depending on how many you make and they're not that hard so over here I have my shells basically you just bake your potatoes like you normally would until they're nice and soft and then just carefully scoop out the inside I'm just scooping it all out and putting it right into this bowl here and then once I have it all in there I'll add some um, melted butter sour cream, shredded cheese, a little bit of chopped onion, and then a whole bunch of chopped bacon. And that's really all I do. And then once that's all whipped back together, 
I'm just gonna pile it right back into these. So I just have to show you guys, this is my reality. I went to help Peter get into the shower and I came back and found this potato that clearly someone has been biting off of. And I asked Joe, Joe, were you eating my potatoes? And he's over there with a mouthful going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, he really, um, he doesn't lie, that's for sure. <laughs> I just put in about a fourth of a cup of diced onion, a cup or so of sour cream. I don't really have a recipe for this. It's just kind of by feel. I just know that I want my potato mixture to be really soft um, and quite rich. That's really, I think, what makes a really good twice-baked potato. And I have this giant bag of shredded cheese here. I'm gonna put in probably at least two cups, so like about two big handfuls of cheese. I still have to mince up that bacon. Uh, and I have one stick of butter melting. So I'm gonna be completely honest with everybody. And I'm saying this very quietly, even though the only people in the house are the children and they could not care one bit what I put in the food. But the secret ingredient to twice baked potatoes is this. I know, you guys are probably thinking you, but I'm gonna put a little bit of bacon grease in here and it is so good. It is just like, it's almost just like eating a piece of bacon with a little bit of potato. Okay, so that is the secret ingredient. Honestly, honestly, honestly. It doesn't take much, just a little bit. And this is just gonna make it divine. I am going to scrape all those bits though. All those bits that are in there, I'm going to scrape all that because that is super tasty too. <clears throat> it's getting really late and we have scrapped our plans to take the logs in tonight. Right. We're going to do it really early in the morning. And I asked Warren to label up some things I'm putting in the freezer. And here's how he labeled the barbecue. I just kind of got a kick out of that. 9.30 at night and I guess that's what I get. It's time to stop cooking. And the other three meals that I had planned, I'm just gonna have to get up tomorrow and get those going after we take those logs in. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning and good night. Good morning. Um, it's just a little bit before seven. Warren and three of the older kids have left to go and work on the log sawing that I talked about yesterday. Plans just continued to change as to how that was gonna happen. And I was um, just putting away my pancake mix that I made yesterday and I was gonna show you. I just mix up like five times my recipe and I put it into this Tupperware here. And I used to keep the recipe taped to the inside of my cabinet but somehow that must have fallen out. So this morning I had to actually pull out my cookbook so that I could find out how much buttermilk and eggs went into it because I had forgotten. So I thought I'm just going to write it on the lid because this is always the container I use for pancake mix. So rather than try to keep track of a little slip of paper, I would just write it right on the lid. So basically what happens is I just kind of fluff this mixture with a fork, then I take out two and a half cups of the pancake mix, two cups of buttermilk, two eggs, and three tablespoons oil or melted butter. Um, usually I'm just kind of in a hurry, so I just go with the, the oil, although melted butter really does make them taste delicious. I'm not sure if you guys all know the trick for just quick making your own homemade buttermilk. If the recipe calls for one cup of buttermilk, um, I take one tablespoon of either lemon juice or vinegar, either works fine. I put that, pour that into my cup first and then I top it off with milk and that basically makes buttermilk. I'm just getting out um, three crock pots because the three recipes that I have left to make this morning use crock pots. So I have a crock pot brand here, I think, yes. This is a seven quart crock pot. Over here is a four quart small crock pot, which I know we have a big family, but I absolutely love having the small crock pot. It works for just a ton of things. And then I also have this Pioneer Woman crock pot, and that crock pot is six quarts. So I just got all three of those out, and I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna put into each one. I think the pepper steak, since it's just a three and a half pound roast, I think I'm gonna put that in the small crock pot, and then do um, a times two of each of those soups uh, in the bigger crock pots. I hope that it's gonna fit in there. Um, I'm gonna have to do a little checking, but that's what's on tap for this morning. And in full disclosure, I'm also, <laughs> 
There it is. <laughs> I'm also uh, watching uh, Jay Morrell's latest video while I cook, so kind of fun to do that. I have my venison roast here in the crock pot. This pepper steak recipe I originally got from South Your Mouth blog, and I have just been adapting and adapting it basically um, since, let's see, it says I made it first August 17th of last year, 2017, and I've just been adapting it ever since. It originally is a skillet meal, but I have now been making it in the crock pot here, um, and this is the first time I'm actually making it with a roast rather than slicing steak. So we'll see how this goes. I'm hoping that this would get my family two meals. I'm doubling the recipe, which means for the sauce that's going in here, I'm using two packs of brown gravy mix. And then there's a whole bunch of soy sauce and black pepper and ground ginger. So that's basically what gives it uh, that um, sort of Asian type flavor to it. It calls for about five to six uh, cloves of minced garlic. And so I'm just going to use um, three teaspoons of this minced garlic. This is that minced garlic that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And it's not as finely minced as what I am used to at Aldi, but it seems to be working just fine. I've used it in a number of recipes already, and I thought it worked out great. I'm only going to use half of the water. Uh, since I'm doubling the recipe, I really should put in two cups of cold water for, for the sauce. But since the roast is going to juice quite a bit in the cooking process in the crock pot, I'm just going to start out with one cup of water and then uh, I can always add more later if it just seems like it is too thick. The cover on that, turn that to low. I'm just going to cook this for six to eight hours until my meat thermometer reads between 160 and 170. Um, and sometime within the next two hours I'm also going to put in a sliced onion and I'm going to put in um, some peppers. I'm out of green pepper right now so it's going to have to be a red and a yellow pepper today. I'm starting to work on the slow cooker ham, bean, and potato soup. I have no idea where I got this recipe from guys. I don't know if it was from a friend or if I found it online and just quick copied it onto a scrap scrap paper but anyways I have this recipe I've made it a couple times we really liked it um, I'm actually going to double it this time so I have to start with two full pounds of dry beans and the recipe says navy or great northern I happen to have great northern so that is what I'm putting in um, I'm hoping I'm really hoping that this is all going to fit into this crock pot it's I'm starting to get a little bit worried that it's not going to fit. Chopped onion, uh, celery, garlic, carrots. I've got a couple ham hocks from, I think they're actually two years old. They've been in the freezer in our, in our deep freeze, uh, so I'm sure they're going to be fine when I open them up, but I just, I really need to get those used up. Uh, some bay leaves, some potatoes, which I'm out of right now because I just used all of them to make those, the twice-baked potatoes. And so I'm going to have to pick up a couple more of those. So I'm not sure if I'll actually get those today to put in there. I may just have to cook them up separately at a later date and put them in. Um, anyways, and then some oregano. I have the water in. I just don't have the, um, I use that Nor chicken flavoring so I'm going to put uh, a few tablespoons of that in there and then it also at the very end calls for some chopped ham because uh, you know a ham hock really doesn't have that much meat on it. So I'm going to cook this on low six to eight hours and use my immersion blender to kind of thicken and creamy it up creamy it up a little bit and I'll probably divide this into about three portions um, and freeze it like that. I'm going to have to do something different because this is not going to work. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it for a minute and decide what I'm going to do for that. But I see that um, as normal, I just overestimated what I could fit into a crock pot. I just had a huge aha moment. I am going to just use my big Nesco roaster that I keep down in the basement for things like graduation parties and stuff like that. I'm just starting to fill it right up. This is going to work so perfectly. I'm glad I thought about this. Have you guys seen a pork hock? <laughs> 
the first time I opened it up I really didn't even know what I was getting what I was gonna see but it's basically just the ankle of a pig okay and then they're smoked there's not a lot of meat it's a lot of bone in there because of course you know I mean feel your ankle there's not much there so anyways there's just a and then there's kind of just a layer of fat and stuff like that but it adds great flavor to the soup so in the end I will also uh, pick around on here and try to pick off as much meat as I possibly can but it's really just adds a lot of good flavor because we have BMX practice tonight so I'll just pick up some potatoes tonight and throw those in or maybe just cook them up first like I said and then throw them in we'll have to see what happens but otherwise this is just going to cook away um, for a good part of today about eight hours until everything is nice and soft and the beans are nice and soft underneath and then that is going to be divided into about three and it's going to be just so so good to make easy dicing of potatoes like when I'm making a lot of soup or something else that uses a lot of potatoes I have this uh, jumbo potato cutter it kind of is meant for like cutting for french fries but what I'm gonna do is put my potato in here I probably should have something on the other side here so I just put a piece of parchment paper down I have my potato in here and I'm just going to if I can do this with the camera in one hand I cannot okay so I wet the suction cup underneath and that made it stick easier and now I think I can do this one-handed and even with my left hand here's what comes out then I'm just gonna move these all together chop 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 throw them in my soup and it's really quick really easy it's been a while so I just added all my veggies to the pepper steak and so that still has about another seven hours or so to cook until it's at just the right temperature and it'll be just the right uh, consistency for shredding the meat and then the gravy should be nice and thick at that point too now the next recipe I'm going to work on is from this cookbook called stock the crock I just got this from our library the other day and inside I found this recipe for beef noodle soup uh, it seems real similar to something I already make called hug and kiss soup but this starts out by using can we see that it uses bone-in beef short ribs and when we bought a half a cow uh, this last winter I think it was I, I got a lot of beef short ribs and honestly I didn't really know what to do with them and so when I saw this recipe and then it uses a crock pot I thought that is a win-win and now since both of my bigger crock pots are freed up because this one is going to take the same amount of water as the other one if I double it it's going to end up being four quarts of of um, liquid so I'm going to have to divide that between my two crock pots and um, so I'm just going to get one recipe started in that crock pot one recipe started in that crock pot and then I should be good to go and then as soon as we get those done we're heading off to 4-H to get make some charity quilts so I need to hurry up and get my kids dressed and their teeth brushed and so that we can get out the door here because we have to be there at 9 o'clock that means we have to leave in about 25 minutes so I better rush rush I'm putting the finishing touches into the beef noodle soup that started with beef short ribs they are under there that's what beef short ribs look like they're quite bony and um, well like ribs you know with a little bit of meat in between so that is going to um, cook and cook and at the end of the soup recipe I will fish that out and then I will uh, pick all that meat off the bone but the last two things I need to add I just need to put in three spoonfuls of beef soup base and then I'm going to put in a can of diced tomatoes so let's do that right away and then we'll do this one over here everything is cooking though three meals that I didn't get done last night they are all cooking right now and I'm just trying to pick up and put a few things away I just always underestimate how much time it's going to take because it just seems like things just end up going on things with the kids or things I get phone calls or whatever is but I am done everything is cooking here are my frozen twice baked potatoes and I'm just going to package these up into some gallon freezer bags So 
I just have this big mess to tackle from cooking and from breakfast and just there's even a few leftover dishes from last night that didn't end up getting washed. It's supposed to get pretty hot again today and so I'm going to take the kids swimming. So that should be a fun thing to do um, and we should be able to have about an hour before lunch uh, to swim and then we'll come in and make lunch. I have leftovers from last night's supper because I made, we cooked up 24 burgers so we have some leftovers and that's what's going to happen. I just took the venison roast out of the pepper steak. Here's how the veggies are looking. And this was reading 170 degrees. It's completely done. And I'm just slicing it and I'm going to put it right back into the liquid. And then we will serve this actually over rice. Some people possibly would put it in a tortilla. I'm not sure. But I'm thinking mainly it'll be served over rice. And this amount of meat depending on how many people we have at our house for the evening. You know, if we have all the older kids here, it might all get eaten. If it's just Warren and I and the younger kids here, this is going to be at least two or maybe even three meals. You can find all of these recipes oh, over dogs. at my blog, which is a different name. Here I'm a country hot wife. Dogs. The blog is Camp Home School. Sometimes that gets a little hot confusing. Dogs. You want hot dogs? Yeah. We'll see about that. And they'll all be over there, which is camphomeschool.blogspot.com. And I will um, have all these recipes. And in the description below, I'll have the links to the cookbooks that I'm using. If you like this type of video, give me a thumbs up. That, that way I know to keep doing cooking videos and um, sharing recipes and large family food and all that goes along with that. Uh, thanks a lot for hanging out with us while... I guess it was just me this time, really, but thanks a lot for hanging out with me while I was getting all these large family meals, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Good morning. I started my big cooking fest on Monday afternoon, and now here it is Wednesday morning, and you can tell because my voice is still pre-coffee here, but I'm just getting the finishing touches on everything. I really wanted this soup to cool, and so this is the ham and bean and potato soup. Uh, mm. It got very, very thick, so I am going to have to add a little water to it when we do warm it up. Nice. But I just tend to freeze uh, mm. things yeah, in ice Chex cream mix. pails. Yes, good morning. Oh, this isn't Chex uh, Mix. Sorry. Uh, Chex Mix. It's not Chex Mix. I tend to freeze things just in like ice cream pails. It works best for me. That is the very end of all Mama. of... <laughs> good morning, Joe. Good morning. Good morning, hat. <laughs> Good morning, hat. You're goofy. And again, if you want any of these recipes, uh, you can head over to the blog, uh, camphomeschool.blogspot.com, and that's where I will have those. Thanks a bunch for hanging out with us here, and we will see you next time for hopefully another cooking video. Bye-bye.